Hi, we're in uh, my my friend Dita's workshop, my mentor, Joshua Brooks manager, and I thought I'd give you a tour of the facility. Yeah, the like caliber films. And he's a he's a bike nut just like us. Love these bikes. Okay, Dieter. Hi. Dieter is Joshua Brooks' manager and he's going to give us a tour of his workshop. Right, well this is uh, my little collection of motorbikes and the reason I collect them is because I love motorbikes more than just about anything. So I've got an RC45 right here. It's pretty cool. Right. So i kind of got to believe the hype about RC45s, so they really are that good to ride. This one's in particularly nice condition. Um, originally a Japanese model, aren't they all? They're all made in of course, but this one was brought in. I brought this one in from Japan to help us another people. And have an RC30, which is um, absolutely pristine condition, as you can see. And again, it was a Japanese domestic model, as they call JDMs, and this was brought in as well. Um, given Australian delivery ones, is quite hard and... and um, I bought it was in good condition, but again, full resto on it. You can see it's pretty smart. This one over here is a CB1100R. For those of you who know that, who that, what they are, then don't really need to explain. But if you're seeing this in another country, this is a bike which Honda made, and they made three models. They made a B version, a C version, a D version. This is a C, and they made a thousand Bs, 1500 Cs, and 1500 Ds. This was owned by Jeremy Burgess, and um, uh, you can see the condition it was in, it was pretty much sort of in this condition when I bought it and Jeremy, after me badgering Jeremy for many years, he finally decided to sell it to me about three years ago and um, thank goodness he did because it's just the most beautiful, beautiful motorbike. It was um, one of the most successful bikes actually ever raced by, by Honda in the early 80s in the production bike class. I don't think it ever really lost a race, it certainly hardly ever lost races. People like Wayne Gardner and Ron Haslam used to ride these and um, and made their names to a certain extent on the 1100R. And then behind here we have what I can only describe as a piece of art. <laughs> the uh, CX500 Turbo from 82. And it's an absolute cracker. Come around the front here, Andy. You can see it's, um, I don't know about you guys, anyone who was born sort of in the 60s and 70s and then grew up in the 80s and knew about new romantic music and digital stuff and the computer age and this one came out when all the computers and digital came in and Honda <laughs> decided to make a turbo bike, God knows why, wouldn't they just put a bigger engine in the bike instead of turbocharging it, but no they didn't, they turbocharged the CX500 twin and without doubt the single most complicated motorcycle, again I've given this a full restoration and fair income it nearly blew my brain apart trying to work out how to put it back together. Plastic everywhere, turbocharged, um, Probably the last crap motorcycle Honda ever made, but in a weird kind of way, it's my favourite because it's just got so much personality, and I just love riding it. It's the kookiest thing you've ever ridden. It gets a lot of attention. But lastly, we've got the uh, CBX1000Z model, which is a '79 model, and again, this is you can see it's in showroom condition, which I've restored as well. And um, it's a six-cylinder 1000cc bike which Honda brought out between the uh, I think. 79 and 82, pretty much. Um, this one's in particularly good condition. Interestingly enough, it was owned by a bloke in a wheelchair. It didn't put him in a wheelchair, but owned by an old black bloke in a wheelchair. He used to have it in his lounge room because he just liked looking at it. And then after a while, he thought, God, I can't have this in the lounge room. So I bought it from him. Again, it was in really good condition, but I've given it a full resto since. And funny thing, this has got the best engine out of all the bikes here to ride. It's so smooth. It's got plenty of power, it just doesn't stop and doesn't turn. Apart from those two little things, it's fantastic. So that's my little collection. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoy it. I ride them all the time. I ride the 45 and the turbo on the weekend, the 30 the week before. So they all get ridden and they're all registered. And um, it's kind of nice because I got the 45 out to the Island Classic at Phillip Island, which is a big sort of Goodwood almost speed event type thing. And, Nobody had seen one of these before because there's only a couple in Australia. And it was nice to see all people sort of respecting it and paying it attention and it's part of the thing. 
if you own these bikes, you've sort of got to revere them and look after them and keep them in good condition for the next owner. Because really, we're only just custodians after all. So that's my collection, Indy. What do you think? I think that's great, Dieter. Thanks no for the tour. No problems at all. All right.